coming to this space, um, you know, I knew it was going to be a ton of work. I knew it was going to be exhausting. It's an ongoing, like forever, I'm going to have always projects to do in this place, small and big. But the nice thing is that it's mine and it's so raw. Like, you know, I can do so much in, in this place and there's so much potential. When this building came up on the market and I heard about it, I was like, oh, geez, that's a cool building. I love that building. It needs a lot of work. And I didn't even know the half of what it needed until I got here after I'd already, you know, <laughs> made it happen. I was like, the whole thing was happening. I did the whole deal from Oregon. And I pulled in a rainy, rainy Friday night in May and I got out of the car and looked at the building. I was like, holy shit. What did I do? Oh my God. And I got into the building. I was like, oh my God, this building needs so much work. Wah. I just like got in and doing it. Um, but you know, the, the reason that I feel it's important is because it is a big part of the community. This building is a landmark building, I think. And it needed somebody to care for it. And it needed somebody to, to put some life into it. So, uh, so there's some stress involved, but I will tell you this. When I get my emails from like higher like new positions opening or whatever, and I, I take a quick scan, I, I just delete it right away. And that relieves so much stress. Yeah, you know, I started teaching um, college when I was 25. So, you know, I've had a lot of time teaching and I, and I, I know a lot of uh, professors who in the last five, six years um, who had like really pretty cush tenure positions, good salaries, done. Like, I'm leaving academia forever. I mean, when I was in Oregon, I had some colleagues who were just like, I can't do it anymore, I'm done. Good positions, like good schools and good, prof you know, good professor, you know, like really good tenure positions and making sweet salaries. They were like, I'm, I can't deal with it anymore. Because it's, you know, and what ha I think what happened with COVID is that, it, it, you know, academia is a really rotten system. It's a broken system and it's getting worse. And this is just my own opinion. If there's any academicians out there, any you know, college professors or, 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 uh, or students, I'm sure, or administrators, um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, do I sound bitter? Yeah, because I'm a little bitter about the scenario, but, but the realism is, the, rea the reality is that um, the system has turned into uh, that of a big business and it's a corporate model. So it's, it's, it's not about the bottom, the bottom line is not about the student's education anymore. It's about the bottom line. It's about the money. It's about the income. It's about building, you know, bigger stadiums for the sporting events or about whatever, you know. I, I, so I can go on and on and on about that, but it's, it's a miserable, messed up, broken system. And the professors are getting beat to hell. So yeah, I moved in May. And that was pretty much the end of my teaching for, for now because I'm, I'm focused on this project. I started thinking about, well, what am I going to do? And um, I needed, I wanted to get back to my work. I never get bored of the figure. I never get tired of, of figuring it out, of, of, no pun intended, of, um, of uh, studying it and analyzing it, you know, and, 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 and uh, researching it, you know, both from an anatomical point of view or from just a, a pure, uh, you know, sort of like aesthetic point of view when you start looking at the emotive aspects of it, and that's the thing that always brings me back to making art, um, is the, the emotional quality, and that seems to be um, you know, where my work always has been, whether I recognize that or not, and it's, it's definitely where I always swing back to. I think some of the strongest work I've ever done, probably for me anyways, um, really have been paintings of people I met, you know, because there's just this, this connection. When I was in Italy, those were the most memorable pieces I did when I lived in Florence, my first time living there. Um, there were just people I was meeting, you know, in my travels living in Florence, and, and I would meet somebody on the street, and, you know, street performer, and say, hey, I want to do a por your portrait. Come out to my studio, I'd do a big portrait of them. When I was living in Portland and, you know, bigger towns in New York, every single day I would, I would do my sketches every day. I would go out on location to the subway or I'd sit in coffee shops or whatever in New York City or Boston or, or Portland um, in Italy. And, uh, and sketch in the cafes. Cause it's like, you know, th those are quick, like, it's like something, I'm responding to something and maybe it's the, the character, maybe it's the spirit, but also it is the light. It's like a movement, it's a posture. It's something that they're standing at the counter or they're sitting there and they're, they're reading or they're getting a cup of coffee and they're sitting and looking at their phone or whatever. There's something that, that catches my attention when you're having a conversation with somebody, you're really, really connected with them and you're really watching and, and feeling and listening. 
um, you know, they can, just, like their eyes move and there's, there's like a moment and there's a thought. It's like a fraction of a second and sometimes that's it. Five hours go by and there's that fraction of a moment and I want to catch that. And, uh, and, and like these fire stories, you know, the fire paintings, they're very narrative, you know. Um, they're made, they're created, like the narrative. Um, but I'm, I, you know, I don't tell you what to think. And I think that, that tends to make pieces that are much more long living uh, because they're not necessarily subjected to the cultural time. Do you know what I mean? My first experience with life drawing, two people walk in from um, you know, some side room, a male and a female, a man and a woman, and they were wearing robes. And I thought that was odd. That struck my attention because I was like, why are they wearing robes? You know, like, odd. And they get up on the, on this model stand, this platform, and, uh, and I was like, no, I thought nothing of it. You know, I was like, well, this is, but I was at attentive because I was like, this is odd, what, what's happening here? So the teacher says, okay, everybody, uh, you know, uh, models posing, and the models drop their robes, and I was like, nude, right? So I'm, so I'm like, how do I respond to this as a 12-year-old? So my immediate reaction was, and I looked around to see if anyone else was reacting, and everybody else was just getting their materials and getting to work. So I looked around for, you know, it seemed like forever, but it was probably 10 seconds, and um, realized that this is just what we do, you know, and um, watched the adults, and I started drawing, and that's, that was my first experience with life drawing. It was, happened to be very fortunate where I had a male and a female model, and I remember doing drawings that day, and... Um, and so that was really an, another really key instrumental moment in not just shaping my, my life as a, an artist, as a painter, as a figurative artist, but also uh, building this um, really deep uh, appreciation for uh, the human figure. This is another vivid memory, too. Uh, we were supposed to be doing you know, handwriting practice in cursive, and, uh, and I was drawing. My dad was in the military, so he was, he was in Vietnam when I, was, when I was born, so I grew up around military stuff. And, it was always, you know, around like tanks and planes and all that stuff. And and, um, and I remember I was always into like drawing like little battle scenes. You know, I was drawing these little battle scenes on, this, on, pa on, the, on the paper I was supposed to be doing the handwriting, the tanks and the planes and all that. And uh, the teacher came over and uh, she says, what are you doing there? What do we have here? And she takes the piece of paper and I was like, you know. And I'm like, oh my God trouble and she looks at it she goes huh and I remember this like she's standing over me she looks at the drawing she looks at me looks at the drawing she goes huh and she takes the drawing she walks up to the front of the class and now I'm like oh my god I'm in trouble you know she goes up to the front of the class and and I'm like mortified you know she says look everybody look what Ian's been doing she holds the drawing up and I was just like oh my god you know and she says uh Ian come up here and I'm like, oh my God, like it's not already embarrassing enough, right? This is just like the worst thing ever. So I get off my chair, we'll get off my desk, walk up to the front of the room and, and she takes me and she brings me over to this big filing cabinet. She opens up the bottom drawer and like the whole class is watching this and I am completely mortified. And, she, and I remember this, you know, I was you know, this tall or whatever, so the, the drawer was, you know, humongous to me. You know, you're only like six inches taller than the bottom drawer of a, ca a filing cabinet. So I remember looking into this thing and she opens a drawer and uh, opens a, a folder, a file, and she takes a drawing and she says, I'm giving you this folder. This is your personal folder. She said, I'm keeping all your drawings. What you're doing is very special. She's like, you can keep going. Go ahead and sit down. I want to keep teaching. I want to fill these walls with work. I want to keep making work to fill the walls. I want to have events. I want to have, you know, educational events, film screenings and book signings and, and open mic and poetry readings and, and things like that. So all of that takes a ton of work and energy and time, as you know. So it's like, well, I better get on it. So, um, so you know, work is just not, it's, you know, just starting.